Adam's Venture Origins is a video game that I wish didn't exist. I watched my brother-in-law play this game a few months back and it caught my eye. You know, uh, for better or worse, I had to play it myself. It was for worse. Adam, I want to have a break from this. I thought I was in for a treat the moment I hit that title screen because <laughs> music sounds not just kind of like or similar, but dead on like the Yu-Gi-Oh intro. And you know, with Yu-Gi-Oh on my mind, I thought, hey, I'll probably like this game. Then much like my experience actually watching Yu-Gi-Oh, the longer I played, the more I realized I don't really like Yu-Gi-Oh that much. According to the Steam store page, the game is categorized as an indie adventure puzzle game. The puzzles aren't even very good, nor really challenging. They're just boring. They're just cannon fodder to pad the game time. All right, let me just say this. This game's bad. Don't get your hopes up. There's no butt scenario. Like Adam and Eve here secretly partake in a hidden gems of sort. Because they fucking don't. Adam's Venture is a game and I don't like it. Not gonna spoil much, but I think it's shit. Right, from here on out, I'm going to divide my critiques into four sections. So here's what I recall, followed by a brief synopsis I've stolen from Metacritic. Adam Venture is the son of Professor Researcher Abraham Venture, the big dog. One day, the professor stumbles onto a book, I believe, I cannot remember that far. He tells Adam to go get his new assistant from somewhere in their house. Or what I presume is to be their house, because apparently no one knows where they are. Especially me. Adam finds a woman in the library. Now keep in mind, the year is 1920, so women are treated as inferior. At least when it comes to creative writing for the early 20th century. The only tropes you can really use are Nazis and... But you're a woman! Adam tries to make an advance on her, but then things get all turned around when it's revealed that she, a woman, is the assistant. See, this is the 20th century creative writing. Her name is Evelyn Applebee's. Or was it Arby's? They solve some puzzles around the house and then go to France. We oui, oui, are Nazis. Nazis! Wow, that's a shocker. Their adventure is put on hold when their path is blocked by a broken down car. Adam must fix it. And he does. That's it. That was like another seven minutes of gameplay. I hope it was worth it. Finally, our heroes make their way to an old professor, Professor Jax. And Jax is a dick. Jax is a dick off the top and he's clearly the antagonist in this small-scale indie adventure game. After fixing some windmills, Adam and Eve head to church. Just Sunday church, a regular old church, which then ends up being above an underground temple, which requires a puzzle to open the doors. That might be a bit of a theme. Holy shit, there's a lot of puzzles. Once done doing whatever they did at that place, they are flown to an oasis. Professor Jax goes bonkers and presumably dies. After Adam and Evelyn are mistaken as Adam and Eve. You know, from that book. Book of Mormon, yeah? Apparently this black smoke flying around is the snake? They speak of apples earlier. Do y'all get it? The corporation they traveled with, which I've only just remembered because it completely blanked my fucking mind, end up locking them up, and they get out. Straight away. Well, just after they narrowly avoided the guards. The fuck is that guy doing? He's just looking at that fence. Hey, you! Stop right there! The fucking filch. Why'd he turn around? <sighs> fucking cunt. I don't want to play Adam's Venture anymore. Fuck you, mate! I was in the clear. I was getting a bit aggressive. I was out of line. Adam, get the fuck down! You fuck me! This game mentions stealth anywhere. Adam! Adam, you're pissing me off. Fuck me. Can I kill these guys? Adam's Venture's not a murderer. It was about to be. Hey, you. Stop right there. He's not even moving his mouth. So what? He held a fucking stapler to you. Where? Where? Oh, I'm gonna rip my fucking flesh off. Holy fucking shit. Dickhead. Thank fuck it's saving. You know, fuck this shit. I'd rather do more puzzles than this. I take it back. They escape after acquiring six gallons of petrol. Luckily, they stole a Tesla, so they were able to escape undetected as the car made absolutely zero decibels of sound. They escape to Jerusalem, because the story goes there next. Once there, they do more puzzles. Dawn disguises, and Adam fixes some shit, and falls in a hole, landing on his back. This is a reoccurring event which happens quite a bit within the story. Whoa. Whoa. Now they're in Solomon's temple. Adam says some sexist shit, and Eve fucks off. 
After finding Eve, Adam apologizes, and then they find the golden plates. Fast forward a bit, because I've completely blanked. Now our heroes are in a mine. Generic villain takes Evelyn Bee Gees and Abraham Venture. Surprisingly, he's not a Nazi. We we are not not Nazi. Nazi. The villain, not a Nazi, reveals his plans to them, and a pilot. A pilot who seems the most betrayed out of all of them. You lied to me. Again, you lied. Sure, he used the others to find a temple, but he used that man to fly a plane. That's out of line. What is not a Nazi's game plan here? Right, what's he leading up to? What's he want? Well, not a Nazi's grand plan is to blow up Solomon's temple, creating a war amongst religions, somehow, which in turn will cause a world war. A war in which he can sell weapons and become filthy rich, but in reality even richer because Allah knows how much money he must already have to pay for an expedition of this size. Adam defuses two sticks of dynamite and calls it a day. Putting an end to an explosive situation. As hindering two sticks useless completely shuts down the operation, because all those other explosions present, they're just for show. Sure. This is the equivalent of plastic fruit on the table. Why have it? In a wicked rad minecart chase, Adam lets Nan fall to his death. Fucking murderer. Adam's venture's not a murderer. It was about to be. Adam's venture comes to an end, and he has saved the world. It's a story as old as time. God, I wish I could get back that time. Anyway, here's that brief summary from Metacritic. Head out in a bold adventure in Adam's Venture Origins. Set in the Roaring Twenties in Adam's Venture Origins, you will explore ancient ruins and recover mysterious artifacts. You don't? Or do you? I can't really remember. Y you might. I don't recall it. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Anyway, together with your trusted accomplice, Evelyn, because it's accomplice, you're going to commit a fucking crime, you will have to outsmart the evil Clorvo company. That was the company's name. I forgot about the company's name. Fucking LexCorp. So yeah, basically... It is sort of what I said, but with some mention of artifacts, and they actually remember the name of the, the evil company. I pretty much hit the nail on the head, though. In a shocking twist, Adam Venture's a douche, but he does make the world go round. Adam Venture makes the world go round. His name strikes fear into the heart of any courtroom. Adam is made out to be a smooth, charismatic ladies' man with a sense of adventure and danger. There are no boundaries Adam has not crossed including personal boundaries. It's only fitting that a womanizer with zero charisma has the voice of a flayed fish, as Adam speaking to anyone is like a fish out of water. He even sports fishing wire to inflict harm on those who don't know who his father is. I'm, I'm Adam Venture. My father. For an entitled ass, he fucking falls on it a lot. With wit as sharp as a plank of wood, the smarts of a bullfrog, and the looks of a pelican, Adam Venture is over his head in every situation. Evelyn and even his father just cannot be fucked dealing with him. Adam's only saving grace is the ability to swing from a rope and crouch in minecarts. It's on his CV. Evelyn Appleby is really not that much better. Her whole existence is just for a biblical reference. Evelyn's just Lara Croft, but she lives in the early 20th century. So men underestimate her, which prevents her from being the main character. Well, that and a lawsuit from Square Enix. It's like they said- How do we make her sound smarter? Why don't we give her a British accent? You're a genius, Alec! Majority of the time, Evelyn's protesting Adam by making him do all the work and somehow being ahead of him. What's that? You just did this puzzle to get from A to B? Evelyn's already there, hon. Should've just climbed that wall, mate. When she makes the right call of ditching Adam in that tomb that she's not raiding, she presumably does the puzzles herself. Then resets them so Adam has to do them. Why? Is it out of spite? I get that. Like, sure, it's Adam, but don't punish me. Really, all Evelyn is is a Lara Croft light. Who knows, maybe she's South African and not British, but she just plays it up. That's Eve. Did you know Abraham Venture is the father of Adam Venture? I know he wishes he weren't. It's also quite well known that Adam thinks that everyone knows who his dad is. Adam. Why would they? I'm starting to think Adam might be a bit of an unreliable narrator. I'm just picking up little contextual clues, I'm not too sure, it's quite subtle. With the personality of Chalk, Abraham decides not to partake in the adventure, only to be drafted in at the end of the game, as the writers realized it was too late to establish new characters. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say he likes books. He's a big reader, that Abraham. I'm the Glob Glow Gab I think it's likely they were going for the whole Indiana Jones Last Crusade with Henry Jones. Like, there's even this thing about his father's book. But it doesn't really work because Adam Venture isn't Harrison Ford, he's just Adam Venture. Professor Jackson, villain man, aka not a Nazi, aka Nan, aka they're the same fucking person. Like, they're in the same category. They're sharing a character slot, because I cannot differentiate between them enough. And with that, I've sort of just clumped them together, and I've got nothing to say about them. 
They both die horribly if that makes you feel something. Jax wants to get rich and not a Nazi just wants to get richer. Again, he's already rich, he has to be. You don't just set up an expedition with pocket money funds. Pilot's the last character I'm going to mention and interestingly enough, he's the last character I can remember. Even though he's not really a part of the story. Yet that makes him the best character, doesn't it? It's just that I remember just as much about him as I do the villains. So I may as well include him. The mouse buttons do nothing. I mean, unless you remap them. Can you remap them? I haven't checked. I didn't want to open the game once I finished it. I didn't want to open the game in between playing it either. The mouse buttons doing nothing just feels really strange. They're probably the most essential buttons when it comes to doing literally fucking anything on a computer. But here they're just completely neglected. Grappling hooks G. I mean, it could have been the mouse button, would have given it something to do, but you know, G for grapple, so we'll throw that there. Uh, the other controls are just a basic wazd and E to select. The mouse does actually do something, it, it still moves the camera around. But with that, when it comes to controlling Adam, it's not good, alright? The best way I can describe it is that Adam is behind the player, he's slow. The input to turn feels very delayed and clunky. Which would be fine if Adam was 8 feet tall and packing mass, but he's a fairly scrawny guy, he's a bit of a twink. The mouse camera also acts like this, so they're working together to work against you. The well, minecarts have one mechanic. Crouching. Why would you ever not crouch? It doesn't affect the speed, it doesn't affect the momentum, and you can still throw grappling hooks. There are around, what, five? Five different puzzles? And each of them gets reused constantly. Sometimes they're even reskinned. There's a little bit of variety in there. You know, that's nice. A lot of these puzzles you can just click away randomly and finish them pretty quickly. There are mazes too, and to add to that replayability, once you complete a maze, you get to choose between two different minecart tracks to take. Both of which always end up at the same place. And this happens a bit. And I noticed it didn't just happen with minecarts. There are two holes at one point. You gotta go through one to get to the other side. But which is it? Doesn't matter. Oh, it's two, it's two paths. Dare I say they probably end up at the same destination. Wowee, they do. And the game doesn't have collectibles or anything, so there's no real point to have that. You're not going to go back through and pick it up, or you're not going to do a second run and I'm- Ooh, I'm going to go through this hole this time, see what happens, going to go down this minecart track. There's no incentive. Why is it there? Is it so you check it out to waste time? Like, oh, that's- that's a good- that's a good ten seconds. Out of then, out of then. We're having a fucking story, out of then. Sneaking. Fucking sneaking. How? Nope. Not doing it. I don't like it. Really, it's a bit obscure, but if you ever played the series of Unfortunate Events game, this is just a clone of, like, the Windows. It's it's not at all, probably. It's just a basic thing. It just reminds me of that. It reminds me of the Windows in that game. Alright, I wasn't able to find much out. Unfortunately, Adam's Venture doesn't have this huge expanded universe where I can just, like, find a law book or this massive Wikipedia. It's just one Wikipedia page. So I wasn't able to find out much, uh, particularly about the game's development, or should I say, the game series development, because I did find that out. This isn't just one game. Sodesco published the first of many Adam Venture games in 2009, developed by Vertigo Games, which was a Dutch indie developer. Now, naturally, I'm one to assume, and I assume this, I think you're a bit overambitious there. This is their MCU phase lineup, planned as an episodic adventure game series we got in 2009, episode one, The Search for the Lost Garden, 2011, Episode 2, Solomon's Secret, and 2012, Episode 3, Revelations. Now where does Origins come into play here? Well, when you read the title, you may think it's a prequel to these games, like the origins of young Indiana Jones and his sidekick, Short Round. No, not even close, what are you thinking? In reality, Origins is a remake of Chronicles, which was released in 2014. It's a compilation of the three episodes into one game. It's clearly these three episodes of content Aren't nearly enough for a full game anyway. So for some reason they decided to remake the compilation. A whole two years later it was released, in early 2016, on April 1st too. As if it wasn't lined up to be a joke. If you think about it, development for Origins realistically would have begun when, if not before, the release of Chronicles. And looking at the picture of the previous games, the remaster remake isn't really at all leaps and bounds better. I'd even go as far to say that the originals have a more visually appealing charm to them. They look less cold and less robotic. They feel a bit warmer and more Dutch. So the difference between Origins and Chronicles was Chronicles was made in the same engine as the first three episodes. 
and that was the Unreal 3 engine. So it sort of seems like the developer just learned what he shifted to, which is Unity 5, and decided as a good starting point to just make the same thing he already has inside of that engine. Really, it could act as like an exercise to familiarize himself with the program. That's what I'd want to do after spending years on a project and finally finishing it, to delve straight into another project, but just make that exact same work again. Redoing a project of a project compiling all these other projects when the first one came out, the reviews were less than stellar, and that was pretty consistent throughout all the games. But I do think that Origins gets a bad rap from everyone who's played it, which is likely just me. But is it worthy of that? Yes, yes it is. The game's been reduced to a trophy collection game. Something short you can pump out for achievements, and not really to be enjoyed, uh, a chore to increase gamer score or PlayStation level. The reforms discussing this to be the only reason to play the game, as it's an easy platinum. That's even why my brother-in-law played it. It was just for the trophies, and it was three dollars in the PlayStation Store. Also, why the fuck do people care about gamer scores and shit? What purpose do they serve? <laughs> Adam's Venture Origins has no replay value, no charm, and it's a boring chore with lackluster mechanics. I think there might be a story in there somewhere, but I couldn't find it. Don't play this game, and if you do, don't pay full price for it. That is an absurd amount. Twenty-five? Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I only just realized while editing this, I was thinking, hey, something's sort of strange here with this, you know, shot return shot. They're having a conversation, but it's showing it from the person who's speaking, like, over the shoulder. And then I noticed and came to the conclusion that it's just a lazy workaround so they don't have to animate the mouths. Holy shit.